Moranjan, Brisbane author, major, majoring in creative writing in QUT. She is a Brisbane Writers' Festival 2024 Youth Ambassador, and she's exhausted from it because it's been so long. Um, and, a, and the co-president of the QT Literary Salon, as well as the 2023 rep recipient of the Kelly Van Meers Memorial Scholarship. She has traveled Europe for two years, spent a year and a half in North America, and recently returned from Paris. When not great gaining world-building inspiration, she dedicates her time to writing and illustrating. She has worked published in Why Not, BWF, or Brisbane Writers Festival, Scratch That, and Glass Magazine. You can find her on Instagram under Josephine underscore Renee underscore official or at josephinerenee.com. When asked where she wants to escape to, um, she says, you know how people ask that question of you're stranded on a desert island, deserted island, you can only bring one person with you, who would it be? And it's supposed to be this horrible situation. Um, you know, honestly, a deserted island sounds pretty good. And if I can just bring a book and we can just make that a deserted island, um, I reckon I'll be having a pretty good time. Um, jo will be reading A Grave Affair. And content warning, this does involve death, suicide, and mental illness. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> death, death, <laughs> hey, hey guys. Um, okay, so this is a little bit of a longer piece, so I hope you'll I hope you'll stay with me for it. There were four things I really sort of wanted to explore with it, and I was probably trying to do too much. But I really love the piece. I really love like the personification of life and death. There's like the Indian restaurant that I kind of worked at for a while is in there because. I wanted it to be and then there's like sort of the deep desire that I kind of have that everyone's like oh you should be famous you should be like wanting to do these incredible things but there's like a part of me that wants sort of the life that these characters kind of have and then I also wanted to explore like my grandparents are getting kind of old now and sort of like how I think they might kind of go out in this romanticized idea that you know, like, oh, they died in their sleep minutes apart. And I'm like, how true is that? Like, how much of that is fictional? Like, did one kind of, you know? And they just, they didn't tell you that. They were like, oh, no, they died in their sleep minutes apart, you know? Like, <laughs> but anyway, I hope you'll stay with me. A Grave Affair. She pressed play. The young man with ephemeral features greeted her on the screen. His smile accounted for every molar. Her thumb breast, wait, sorry. I'll see if I can. Is that any better? Just stand closer. Stand closer? Hello. Um, her thumb brushed stray lint from the screen. Welcome, gummy worms, to another Harry book review. His long fingers picked up the book. A Grave Affair by Jean Moriarty. Today is a bit of a surprise, because I would like to discuss how I just can't finish this novel. The book fell from his fingers. Her tea spilt, its lukewarm liquid uncomfortably sealing her shirt to her chest. He then, in what she might have once considered a charming way, searched the floor. His hands grasped the now bent cover of an old telephone burnt into a skull and dripping with wax. Her ears selectively listened to the worst, as if programmed to a frequency that could hear nothing else. I hated the main character. She was so depressed and didn't listen. I got through three chapters and I was ready to dig my own grave. It's delivered in such a weird way too. I saw some of the reviews that said it was a beautiful love story about life and death. I'm telling you now that this is not a romance. Sorry, it's just more trauma porn being tr pumped into the world that gives people these false views on how to manage bad circumstances. See a professional woman? In saying that, I know it's self-published, so I wasn't expecting much, but it really wasn't edited to a professional standard. Low battery. It was all I could do to help. She fiddled with the charger, but soon abandoned the laptop for her phone. They didn't waste any time. It's exactly like Harry Book said. It's depressing and isn't romantic at all. 
Jean Moriarty should be cancelled for the way she depicts mental health without any trigger warnings. I would give this negative stars if I could. Did any of you even read past the first few chapters to the twist? She should just kill... I cut the screen's power. The darkness reflected the tears that streamed down her cheeks. With only 50 reviews that set it at 4.6 stars, it didn't take long for it to reach three. She dressed all in black, which suited her mourning. She didn't have any time for another shower, but washed her face in the sink. Wisps of straight brown hair fell from her bun and curled. Her pupils contracted, drowned in ocean blue as they reflected in the medicine cabinet mirror. She held its hinge. When she was gone, I lifted a louver and snuck through. I followed her path from behind. I assumed my true form, slicking back the dark tendrils of my hair. I called for him. Life. He revealed himself. Star-pressed patterns lingered in his coat. His lips curled as he leapt towards me and thrust warm hands beneath my vest. Miss me? His golden eyes stared up at me through yellow lashes. I felt heat in my cheeks and an aching thump in my chest, which has followed me since I first looked upon his creations. I got him to read the book. I know it didn't work out so well, but look at this. He cut the rigid features of my face and his hot hands and turned me to the restaurant's kitchen window. My figure morphed into a raven as I saw the view before me bathed in orange. I flew to a nearby street lamp and watched the image unfold. Harry Longbourn stretched out his hand to Jean. What have you done? I asked the sparrow that flew straight from the cuckoo's nest and was sneaking between my feathers. With a satisfied tweet, he said, what you asked. The two were linked. Jean wiped her hand from his almost immediately and from my vantage point, I could see his features fade. I watched her go out the back. She clutched her apron strings and fastened them tighter while filling the bucket with mostly suds. A light drizzle fell from the sky. I hope you know what you're doing. I felt his warmth seep into me and penetrate the coldness of my heart as I kept my wing shielding his small frame. It's quieter in the rain. How's the boy been? Panic attacks every night. Nothing seems to soothe him. The girl? I fear she will kill herself sooner than anticipated. As I watched what looked like sparks bounce from the street, I saw Harry with the mop and Jean with her face in her hands speaking to the chef. We watched as the days went on and Harry ran out screaming at customers after forgetting to ask if they wanted their curries mild, medium or hot. Harry ate a chili and cheese naan and nearly died, were his words. Many non-craved drug addicts entered the store with bloodshot eyes and add-ons that were hard to find the prices for. The mop leant against the railing beside Harry on the stairs as he stared into the void. Jean strolled up with a cashmere naan. Would you like to share? She offered the tinfoil towards him. He took a bite again with that huge curl to his lips that nearly reached his eyes. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you to show me the ropes. Jean sat back a little disheartened, for even I knew she'd allowed him to take the brunt of a few things, forgotten others, and feigned innocence on select knowledge. Punishment well prescribed, life believed, but I didn't think it true. What do you do outside of this? Oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's so soft and sweet. His teeth fell through the bread and a few nuts came out. I'm a writer, she said. Life and I drew in an unnecessary breath. Ah, oh. his curly hair brushed his shoulders with the cock of his head. Anything I've heard of? A grave affair. We collectively breathed out the pent up air if only to buy us time for the horror of what she had said. Jean was never once to miss its words. I knew it had been on her mind. The rating of her book had dropped 1.2 stars and she'd followed its decline like a divine summons. Oh, Harry said. Life and I knew he was trying to restrain his heart from beating so fast, so loud in his ears that it consumed every word and convinced his brain he was about to die. You didn't read the whole thing. I just wasn't my thing. I'm really sorry. My sister suffered from depression and it just really, yeah. They turned to the street lamps and Jean stood. 
With a wave to the kitchen, she left. Harry was sick for the next few shifts, and Jean was left to stare vacantly at jobs she wished she had another set of hands for. She watched the reviews five times, cried three of the five, and looked daily at the page for an update. 1.1 stars. She'd written an email to the platform to explain how one influential YouTuber reviewed the book, and within minutes, without time for people to read the novel, there were one-star ratings. There was no reply. But while checking her emails for a response, she stumbled upon a message from Harry Book. I'm sorry, I read your book. I don't expect this to fix everything, but I hope it helps. Attached was a video that implored those who hadn't read the book to reconsider their ratings and never changed past three stars all her life. His apology was sincere and he cried while describing how his sister lost her life. The parallels unnerved him, but the book ultimately brought him a huge sense of comfort in knowing she wasn't alone in her death. He explored the twist, how the character life hated his creations being ruined, but finally saw how it can be a mercy when he can be cruel. How nobody appreciates life's work more. I do believe his impression of life was tainted by his mirror image. People hate to see their worst qualities reflected. For Harry carries a jovial spirit which veils his anxieties and harsh views of reality. Jean went to work, but Harry made no appearance. I left her phone open to his email. The reply button so near and unnerved me she hadn't pressed it. The review sat at two stars, and although some had retracted their comments, she read over the ones that remained and again, as if the bad words had stickier letters, they stuck to her skin in ways that wouldn't peel off. But to our great fortune, she messaged him, thanked him for years of companionship as a voice in the background that filtered out the loneliness of her home. She confessed to being a fan, watching his content before and after work, that his tone always made it feel like an enlightened conversation with a true friend about the literature she loved. On rainy days at the restaurant, the chef would make them cashmere naans and they'd bite into the soft surface with steam rising from their mouths and taste the sweet, delicate flavours packed inside. Any extra curry that wouldn't fit in the takeaway boxes would be set aside for them and they'd sit on the stairs with their feet up, feast after closing and talk everything books. They could talk for a lifetime on the merits of a literary genre or the emerging talents of a new creative, and they did. Moving in together to save on rent, eventually they opened their hearts to the idea of love between two people who could not have respected the other's work more. Jean wrote new novels and Harry reviewed them, but neither achieved large success enough to quit a casual job. But they liked it. They worked together in cafes, bars, restaurants, and our library at the end of their lives. They had two children, Jem and Scout. Life guided the children from a nebulous scar, star. When it was time and they'd lived long lives, Harry slept on. Jean wouldn't have gone out the same as him. She'd been fighting my embrace for so long, finding more warmth in it than others ever had. She tried to wake him, but she knew in her heart, as I did, that it was his time to go. Jean rose from the bed and tied the knot of her sky blue dressing gown tight around her ribs. I gazed upon her milky eyes in the vanity, the crow's feet beside them which proved how her smile had eventually matched Harry's. She brushed what was left of her grey hair with an old silver comb before popping a few of every pill from their medicine cabinet into her mouth. She lay down, placing the blanket over them and smoothing the wrinkles. She moved a strand of Harry's hair behind his ear and slowly crept forward until her forehead was pressed against his. Her hand against his heart, she cocooned the shape of him. Leaning her face into his chest, she let his shirt catch her tears. He was still so warm. Jean's eyes met mine. It's nice to finally meet you, death darling. I bent my head, and I you. With my hand on Harry's shoulder, I nudged him lightly, and he woke too. I guided them through the dust of the center of the world, and watched them fade into the heart that would place them anew in the universe. The medical examiner said they died in their sleep, minutes apart. So much, guys. Um, okay, Reese is here. <laughs> Do you want me to?
Yeah. But you can you stay for a moment quickly? First of all, sticker. Oh yeah. Wonderful. Um and Joe, I was told um you did some stuff with Scratch that today, this um this semester. Yes. Um and we've got a book for, for Scratch that. Do you wanna talk about it quickly? Yes, I can do that. Hello everyone. Okay, so as you know, I've been working on the Brisbane Writers Festival and I've been working on Scratch That, which has just been absolutely fabulous. And this fabulous. is our wonderful book. Unfortunately, like our launch party for it got cancelled, <laughs> but that means I could bring more people here. So I was kind of happy about that. I was like, what can I, what can I, what can I so long from this? <laughs> so it was pretty good. And also, the book is free, <laughs> which is also very nice. So, if you were really interested, like firstly, Scratch That is incredible. It's the student-run magazine. You mostly, like, you can submit at any time. They have an open submission. And they also do, like, twice a semester, they make a zine. And so you can submit to be in the zine as well. It's a little harder to get into, but like, I definitely recommend it. You can see your work in print. And they put so much detail and attention into everything. It's gorgeous. Like, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Themed. Oh, yeah, this one's fantasy themed. Um, but they have, like, a new theme every time. So just, you know, follow the Instagrams, do all that kind of thing. Um, and, yeah, um, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Um, but we have the wonderful Rowan here. Rowan, could you, like, yeah, raise the book? So if you are interested in having a look at a copy, you can definitely go to him and I'll give you one, provided we haven't, like, provided he still got them, you know, like, until it runs out. So, like, first in best dress for that as well. Um, and, yeah, it's just amazing. Usually you run the magazine in third year if you want. It's called SCP, Situated Creative Practice. That may change in future years, but that's what it is right now. And, yeah, it's pretty great. So um, that's everything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Um, so while you dogpile Rowan 